Hi, Casper. Thank you very much for agreeing to meet with us today and talk a little bit about your expertise um, for the Kai community. Um, why don't you just give us a couple of sentences introducing yourself? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, so my name is Casper Hornbeck. I'm a professor at the University of Copenhagen uh, in uh, computer science. And I'm interested in all parts of HCI, but uh, for the past... I guess a couple of years I've worked a lot on user experience and a lot of body-based user interfaces as sort of my main, two main areas of interest. Thank you very much. So let's dive right in and um, start by asking you one of the things that interests me a lot uh, when I'm trying to teach new graduate students about um, what to do and what not to do when writing a Kai paper is what do you think is the biggest mistake that students make um, when they're trying to write uh, a new paper or trying to get a paper accepted at Kai? Um, like single-handedly in your experience, what's the biggest mistake they make? Um, well, actually, I think it's it's probably before writing because I guess it's it's picking the wrong problem or the wrong thing to uh, to write about. So, so I guess in in my view, uh, I mean most most mistakes makes way before for uh, before writing begins. But I guess if we just think about uh, writing, I guess um, uh, like starting out researchers, but even myself included, people just start too late. I mean, in particular for non-native speakers, but I guess even for native, it's just very hard to write uh, 10 pages that are sort of coherent, tells a good story, anticipates uh, the reader's questions and and are thorough. So, uh, yeah, too late, I starting guess. too late, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. So... Um, what advice would you give people that are writing in terms of style now that we've said, okay, there's general quest uh, general problems that they might run into, such as picking the wrong topic or starting too late. But if you look at um, the writing style that they have, maybe in your case, particularly with graduate students that are non-native speakers, um, what style advice would you give them um, for building a Kai paper? Is there anything that you think works really well or doesn't work well um, when they're trying to write a good piece? Well, I I um, I think so. So just sort of in in sh in terms of pure wordsmithing, I uh, think just being very uh, direct, and in particular, if those of us who struggle with with English short sentences, not pegging too much in, making one paragraph one thought, and all that kind of of uh, stuff, I think is very. Uh, it's very uh, useful at, at a slightly, uh, I don't know if that's writing style, but at a slightly higher level, I use a lot of time when I um, try to write papers with students on, on figuring out the right argument. So we do uh, like maybe just one line arguments for, a, a, so four or five lines of argument for an introduction or for a discussion so that sort of the really the narrative and the structure is, uh, is clear. Okay, so really trying to structure the argument well, I guess, this is uh, one of the big things yeah. here. Um, yeah, and then just actually, I guess, a lot of times, uh, at least for me, it's also a matter of just figuring out what you're actually trying to say before you just write a lot of sentences, or maybe after you've written a lot of sentences, try to structure it and make it coherent and make it into a good story. Now, you talked a little bit about length and, uh, you know, as a non-English speaker, like how to structure the word, uh, word lengths and so forth. Um, are there any words or, or phrases that you hear students do? Um, there's a big debate about passive or active voice and things like that in research papers. Um, do you have a strong opinion of um, how that should go in terms of wording and phrasing um, in general? Uh, well, I, I think at least my students make lists of words they know I hate, <laughs> but I, I, I think it's probably, I mean, that, so uh, so that's, I'm not even sure it's right or not, but there's just a long list of words I I, uh, I really uh, dislike in writing, but I think uh, mainly it's probably, I, I personally have a hard time understanding complicated sentences, and I I really um, try to weed out sort of empty sentences or 
sentences when nothing happened. But I guess so. So in that way, I don't think those are unusual writing rules or writing ways or uh, any anything. Um, but yeah, there's words I really don't like, but I don't think they're that <laughs> interesting, and maybe they're not right. I have some of those. I, for example, I have in order to, which I really hate. I always like to instead of in order to. And my students already know that uh, when I'm looking at the paper, they better get rid of that because I'm just going to cross it out. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that's normal. Um, so in terms of uh, excellent writing as a positive example, are there any Kai papers that you remember or um, maybe even books or other things um, where you've seen excellent writing or great writing that you have actually been inspired by? Um, I, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of Kai papers that contain really nice uh, really nice uh, writing. I, I, for instance, really like some of Shun Shai's papers, very simple, direct, and to the point. And and then there's this whole, at least in my head, it's sort of a British school of very uh, super beautiful writing, like. Uh, Christian Heath and Paul Love or Richard Harper or Kenton O'Hara or sort of, that they can just write. So I'm just amazed sometimes about how elegantly they can uh, discuss um, uh, a topic. So those are all, but I guess actually, so so part of doing, um, uh, I did a, a paper for this guy on, on problems on the ACI and, and, and sort of in doing that, I read all the, Best papers from Kai 2015, and so there's just 21 of those. It takes a couple of days, and I thought that was really, really amazing because I I thought all of them, of course, maybe very different topics, but super well written, and that taught me a lot on writing. Nice. I will surely look those up for the course. Um, so. In terms of structure, we know that uh, Kai papers usually follow a rigid structure, something like abstract, introduction, related work, main methods, results, discussion, limitations, future work, all that stuff. Um, in terms of the abstract, uh, I've heard it a lot of times that people say the abstract is really the most important bit of your paper. I wonder if you agree with that statement and how the heck do we write an ex effective abstract for Kai? Yeah, no, sure. It's, uh, I, I, I think it's... Uh... I think it's really, uh, really an important piece uh, of the whole um, document. But I guess it's it's now I, it's often read still with the document. But but anyway, so um, what do I do? Well, that's one of the few pa parts of a paper I'm pretty good at starting on very early. So I actually force uh, for most projects, people in my group write an abstract very early. So that can be actually half a year before submitting anything it's not necessarily for Kai and then we iterate a bit on that and just and, and in the end of course it will be a completely different abstract but for me it also sort of guides the uh, the um, direction of the word uh, of the work so I, I guess for me a, a good abstract um, I really like that there's a problem <laughs> that it's clear what problem a uh, paper is uh, solving some uh, I mean, some technical papers don't really use that style, but I, I really like I really like problems. I like to know the solution to those problems, and then I I like to know some I add a, some sort of perspective or a, a bit more than than the results. Uh, so some kind of perspective or one discussion point or something like uh, like that. Would you say it's important to end the abstract with a main contribution and a takeaway? Um, well, I guess I, I, I guess it can be for some papers. I guess for some papers, it it I I'm I'm so so actually I think in in Kai paper writing these uh, so I think those categories like the old uh, Bill Newman work on contribution and benefit and. Um, and uh, significance also, I think they're very nice, but I think, I mean, some people begin to write as if though they have to sort of um, force feed you with the, with the contribution and, and their bullets with contribution. And I actually think it's it's sort of really terrible writing. So I'm not I'm not particular big fan of bringing that out. I know some people uh, do that. Maybe I occasionally do that uh, 
too, but in general, I I think uh, like it should sort of be be obvious. I I I I hate a little bit the idea that papers turn into to lists of bullet points or these uh, structured abstracts where that's very predictable. So I I don't particularly care about about uh, that. I mean, it could also maybe it could end with sort of a perspective or a direction or a new set of I don't know problems that come out of this work or whatever which may or may not be a contribution i wouldn't like the may or at least which may or may not be the main contribution mm -hmm. so okay so this is uh, good so but in general you agree that the abstract is a very important part of a yeah. paper now if we look at the other parts introduction related work main methods results discussion um is there any part that you think is particularly important when papers are getting reviewed um, in your experience being on committees uh, at kai and having seen what reviewers say has there been uh, sort of a preference for uh, or non-preference for some sections that people have said well if they would only have written this section better that paper would have gotten in um, well i mean first of all of course not all papers follow this uh, structure and i guess it's it's uh, it's fitting for a number of papers and i but many other people write write the uh, many other people write papers that deviate quite a bit from this with the with the good success i guess so in a way i think uh, that i personally really like discussions i think that's uh, if you sort of assume that the but you can't <laughs> but if if you if you could assume that the method and the results were were sort of okay then uh, then i think in in one way the discussion is where uh, the interesting things would uh, be happening it's where there would be comparison to the earlier results a sort of state of the art or what we knew before this paper and it would spell out what we know now and what we can do with that with that net uh, knowledge, so I I really like discussions. Uh, I I don't think I, I guess most papers. So what what do they, what are they so the, what are they rejected on? That's a good uh, missing related work, screwing up in methods. Uh, maybe those are the main main. Uh, or may, I, I guess even in the abstract, sort of just not having an interesting enough problem. Uh, or a problem where the, when you get the results, you sort of say, so what? So this is actually good. So given your, um, I guess, uh, um, direction in the community, which I would say is user experience in general, what would you say makes an interesting problem for the user experience community? Um, well, that's, <laughs> well, that's a good... Uh, that's a, so that's a good. Uh, I mean, I have a list of concrete questions for the community, but I guess that's not uh, quite what you are after. I guess so. I, I guess I'm more actually now, and and you know now, we, we, I guess we're both in the situation where we send out things for review and we we look at them. I'm probably happy to accept a paper on any topic as an AC or as a, a reviewer, but I think the authors need to work in the introduction and related work to convince me that there's a real and not just sort of a made up or or invented uh, problem and that they have some sort of interesting angle not necessarily a solution but just an angle or some new uh, data or some i don't know perspective on that problem that's worth reading but actually then it can probably be be, be anything I mean, for user experience, uh, uh, these particular problems that would be exciting to see people tackle, like what happens to user experience over a long time or what are the factors that make an interface good and so on. But I guess uh, most papers are more, at least uh, at least my own, I'm mainly more modest than that and taking smaller uh, smaller problems. But I guess for me, well, I, anything could be interesting. It can be I mean, it can be a replication, it can be a completely novel thing, it can be a tiny aspect of user interface, or it can be like what makes an interface good sort of contribution. I don't really care. Okay, so lots of different options there. Um, in terms of um, excellent papers or papers that have 
uh, tackled excellent problems in the community. Are there any examples or maybe even of your own papers that you can think of where you would say, well, they've really tackled a very interesting problem and they've really written a really great paper about this? Oh, but I, I think I think there are so many good papers, as I mentioned those. Uh, I think in particular, I mean, I mentioned this example of reading uh, uh, just all best papers independently of whether or not they were inside or outside my area. And I thought many of the, those were were super interesting. There was Kai 2015, a brilliant paper on, uh, on notifications that outline the different types of theories we have about notifications and then uh, made some experiments that, that sort of contrasted those theories. There were stuff on gender biases in uh, in uh, search. There was a highly velocity, highly technical paper on, uh, on sort of sentence level um, correction in text entry and I thought like for me all of those were really uh, excellent and, and and interesting cool that's great that's actually I think again very helpful in, in terms of trying to synthesize what makes a great paper now um, especially in your case where you've read all these best papers um, do you think there are certain areas that are just more likely to become a best paper, like certain research areas that are pretty hot or pretty um, sexy, I think, to Kai, uh, that they might get more best paper nominations? Mm, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, probably, I, I don't know. So the, the whole best paper thing, it's not like that's also a process, right? So it's not, it's not sort of an absolute... Uh, uh, standard, but of course there are hot topics and there are less hot topics. And in in some ways, I really like when people contribute to a non-hot topic in a very convincing uh, way. So I guess the, there was a WIST best paper last year that um, that um, that dealt with uh, collaborative web editing. That I thought that was really uh, great to see advances. Uh, advances uh, there but I, I don't know like for best papers I'm, I I don't really know what I mean I, I actually don't uh, personally think so I try to make uh, good work and I'm pretty sure that that some of um, I mean I'm pretty sure that good work eventually will be published it's not always at the uh, it's not always at uh, Kai and of course it's nice to get best paper awards but but I think it, they, they probably mean that they are really good uh, papers, but they are also really good papers that are rejected or just uh, accepted. And I, I guess in particular with respect to controversy or new approaches and stuff like that, I am not sure I would expect to see that pop up uh, for best papers. So, I mean, there are counter examples, I guess. So do you think something that's very safe, like Fitz Law or something that that's maybe easier to get these kind of papers than something that's a um, uh, debated topic then, or does it not matter? Well, um, if in, well I, I think there are, I don't know, I think it's, it, I would actually be, I would be amazed if there's a Kai best paper on Fitz Law, <laughs> yeah, I guess, but um, no, I, I don't know. It's, um, I mean, there's some debate papers that make, Best paper awards, but um, I don't. I'm I sort of the the mechanics in that is a little. It's not so clear to me how that happens. Okay, um, in terms of content and the analysis that's done, do you think there is a preference towards qualitative or quantitative studies if it's a study paper? Or have you not noticed anything like that? Or maybe even from the design side, do people prefer evaluative papers or design papers? Um, you said yourself that you've tried some different ways of writing a paper that are not sort of your standard, standard evaluation paper. Have you noticed mm -hmm. any preferences in the, the reviewing the papers and dealing with ACs? I, I think that the whole... Um, I think that everybody is very sensitive uh, now to differences in methodology and in and disciplinary backgrounds and and so on so i think actually it's uh, i mean i think we are 
Kai is pretty good at accepting many, many different things. I, th- th- I mean, there's some, there's uh, some subcommittees that are maybe more uh, open to some types of uh, of papers, and then there's these very generic ones, maybe understanding people that. I think you could probably more or less you could send a lot of different types of paper to that um, subcommittee. So I actually I don't I don't think there's a a big bias for or against uh, anything on on the whole. Of course, for individual papers there will be discussions about this. Uh, I personally think that th- those discussions are a complete waste of time uh, because I think everybody should know by now that. Uh, that uh, like the problem is central and the method is secondary and the method can be anything depending on the on the problem. But I actually think we're fairly good at dealing um, with different approaches, even different uh, statistical approaches also has been discussed. But I think that it, I think it looks like we're we're doing that fairly well. So I don't feel a a bias or a preference towards uh, particular things. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so let's uh, veer off a little bit more towards the personal questions uh, that concern the way that you're writing your papers. Um, so one of the things that um, I have asked a couple of people and gotten actually very interesting um, approaches and answers is what technology people use for writing their papers. This can be the programs that you prefer. I mean, there's obviously Word and LaTeX and so forth and uh, different operating systems. Are there any little helper programs that you consider like these are little nuggets that you just uh, give us tips to your students, um, a thesaurus or a dictionary or anything like that. Um, is there anything that you have in your arsenal of uh, paper writing tools that you're especially uh, happy about? And just kind of tell me what you generally use to write your papers. Uh, yeah, so uh, I generally use uh, Word and uh, Sotero as a reference manager tool. Um, some people are are very so I'm I'm in the computer science department. Many of my colleagues are computer scientists. They want to write in LaTeX, and I, I I hate that, but I do that as well. So that's uh, I think often share LaTeX, but other uh, web-based uh, LaTeX uh, systems we use for for that, and that's that's about that's about what I use. I mean, for just in terms of writing. Okay. Sounds good. So pretty standard set of tools, I guess, and yeah. depending on what yeah. the... special or tricky or whatever in, in that way. No, no special tricks. <laughs> okay. No, not really. So what kind of environment, um, once the Kai deadline comes around, uh, we all get a little bit crazy. It's like uh, three to four weeks left and uh, we start to build our own little writing environment. Do you have any special environment that you use for writing? Uh, Do you just make it happen uh, around you or do you listen to specific music or some sort of noise? Do you have anything that facilitates you getting into the mood for writing or is there nothing? Um... So I mean, it depends uh, a, a lot. The papers I so I have papers where I'm very happy about the process, and I would like to talk about those. And then I have papers that where I'm not very happy about the process. And I, I guess I can also talk about uh, about those. But for me, ideally, and it does happen for uh, some papers I submit to Kai. Ideally, writing takes doesn't take place in the last. Uh, a month ideally takes place in the spring or up to the the summer and then uh, there's time to uh, get feedback from uh, colleagues or uh, to fiddle with it occasionally i i've i've sent papers to proofreading if they're really done early on uh, but that that's sort of my that's how i would like it to uh, to be and it's not always like that <laughs> most of the time it's not like that but i i usually um, it's rare that i'm the uh, sort of the driving force in uh, in writing so most of the last part of like when we're down to weeks or days i usually mainly uh, comment on stuff for edits 
edit things that are already done. And I have no particular, um, I don't think, I rarely listen to music and I just try to uh, get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, that sounds good. So, and I actually really like that you talked a little bit about your uh, writing cycle that you start in spring and then do some more over the summer in terms of polishing and then hopefully have it all done for the good ones. I mean, we all know that there's other projects where mm. this timeline doesn't uh, happen that way, right? So. I think, and even the timeline can even. I mean, for loads of projects, I actually so I have I have something I write on now, which is intended for the next kind. So mm -hmm. sometimes I start very, very early, and I like that. <laughs> of course, <laughs> the best. Yeah. Nice. Um, so, uh, in terms of collaboration, would you say that generally you write more collaborative papers? Are you a fan of uh, starting something yourself? Um, I mean, it's with uh, different jobs, uh, you have different obligations, right? Like some of us are researchers, some are professors, and don't necessarily have the same amount of time for writing. Um, how would you say does it usually go for you? Do you start the project or um, at your level of seniority, is it more that you're dealing with the students, um, bringing, pitching a proposal, and then you're kind of guiding it through all the way to the end? Or do you have a mix of both? Um, how does that usually look like? Uh, yeah, so that's a good question. I I, I really like to write, <laughs> so I I like to interfere with the the people I'm collaborating with in in in, in papers with them. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, not a lot of the. Sometimes I would I would write the initial maybe uh, introduction draft. Um, could be I I like first page introductions a lot sometimes we'll write those and discuss those as a basis for for the project so it's not particularly about Kai but it's just sort of a way of thinking about whether the the main lines of thought are in 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 place uh, and then I have of course people uh, uh, around me that uh, that uh, when they have time enough uh, are so good at writing that I better just let them write and edit and uh, and discuss with them. But I, I mean, I really like to write. I really like to also write discussions. So it's sort of hard to keep me away from that. Uh, but then some people are, are are gentle enough to edit it afterwards. <laughs> but um, but I mean, um, so I like to be involved in writing. I um, I, I think that's. That's uh, fun. Awesome. Um, I actually agree with you on that point. Uh, my favorite is also introduction and uh, discussion sections because uh, mm. I always feel like that's sort of giving things the right angle and it's uh, really a lot that mm. you can do there. So talking about that, um, uh, thinking about your own papers, um, what, do you th what, what would you say is your most favorite paper that you've written? Is there anyone that you can point out where you say, uh, this is a paper that I've written that I really, really like? Oh, well, that's a good question. I have many papers <laughs> I, I like for various uh, strange uh, uh, reasons. Um, I mean, right now I, I, I really like the paper I, from this year's Kai I wrote on problem solving. It's a very, um, that absolutely doesn't follow the uh, structure we talked about earlier. It was super hard to write. I'm sure that that people would, would be. Or we, I guess in writing it, we thought a lot about how um, people would react to it and try to anticipate uh, questions. We even made sort of a, a frequently asked questions within the paper. So there's a lot of so that. But maybe it's just because I I remember it's just reason. <laughs> I think there was a lot of of of, of uh, things in writing that paper that was um, that was relatively uh, relatively successful. But but I guess apart from that, I more think about I guess uh, papers in terms of what I what I think they done they did the research wise, and then there's some some really old ones that I think is really good. So the first Kai paper I presented myself in 2001, I still think is really, really good. Awesome. Uh, and it's probably terrible writing. I didn't look at it for <laughs> a long, a long, a long time, but I think the content was really uh, interesting. 
Nice, nice. This is very good. Um, in terms of structure, again, um, if you're if you're seeing a paper, have you ever thought about a paper that um, you had under review that you didn't like in the end just because of the way it was presented? Because oftentimes um, we do put a lot of emphasis, at least towards the end, to mm -hmm. making the figures look nice, making the tables look nice. Um, has there ever been a case where you actually thought, mm, this is actually good content, but they've presented it so poorly that uh, I really can't accept that paper? Or has it been the other way around sometimes that the content was so good, but the presentation, um, or, or sorry, uh, this is the same. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know I what know I mean, what essentially. What yeah. mean. Um, I think so. So from that perspective, I think uh, I, I once heard Shuman Sai say something about uh, uh, continuously evaluating content or substance over style, and I really try to think about that uh, both respect to with respect to figures and with respect to spelling or like English skills in in general. So I would I would really like to try as a review or as an associate chair to see through bad presentation and potentially even help people uh, uh, improve it um, but but then with that said uh, I mean uh, not everybody thinks that way a lot of decisions around acceptance or some decisions around acceptance and rejection are taken by people who have very short uh, time to get the idea of a paper and there I, I can just see that in particular videos, uh, but also, of course, figures, um, structure, repeating yourself endlessly through a paper so that no one is uh, is confused, um, and all these things are, uh, are, are, are important uh, tools. So um, so I guess it's worth um, spending time on, on that. I think in some ways it's a little... Um, it's not sad, but um, I'm sure there's papers with um, with good content that are rejected, or, or sort of if they're on the edge for some other reasons that are rejected because of presentation or videos or figures and so on. So I think it's a place where people can help themselves. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So my final question is, um, do you have anyone in the Kai community uh, that you always sort of admired in terms of, um, you know, uh, having an academic crush on someone that you say, oh, if I could only do uh, research like this person, or um, have you always thought of yourself as that person that you're doing the research you've always dreamed of? Or is there always someone that you thought, oh, if I could have a little bit more of that in my own research, it would be great? Um... No, I, I well, I think there are so many people to learn from and imitate. So, uh, so I'm not sure if I want to name. I mean, do names, but I think there are people who submit papers that are way more theoretically deep and and thorough than my papers, and 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 I really admire those. Uh, I think also that are. Uh, um, that, that there are people who submit papers that are crazy in really, I mean, really interesting ways. So just uh, uh, tackling uh, ways or, or sort of expanding at least my notion of how one should do uh, research and how the types of technologies you can you can construct. So I, uh, well, there's lots of stuff that uh, that um, that inspires me all the time. Okay. I already made many names, all of those I like. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes our interview. So thank you so much for taking the time for this. And I look forward to catching up with you at the future Kai conference.